Today promises to be an even more exciting day than yesterday. Yesterday, we covered the stages of assessment and formulation and ended with sessions on implementation as demonstrated in the framework that we are using for the conference. Today, we'll go into monitoring and evaluation, encouraging and embedding, and finally, moving forward. So as not to put us behind schedule, let's start the first session this morning. This plenary session will cover the long-running topic of monitoring and evaluation that forms part of an ongoing debate on the utility of CSR. Since the last global crisis, both shareholders and stakeholders are concerned with assessing the outcomes of CSR activities. Our speaker is no other than Jaime, <clears throat> Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala, who is chairman and CEO of Ayala Corporation, one of the largest business groups in the Philippines. He has received multiple awards and recognition, including Management Man of the Year in 2006, and the Harvard Business School Alumni Achievement Award in 2009. He was a recipient of the Presidential Medal of Merit awarded by the Republic of the Philippines President and was given the Philippine Legion of Honor with rank of Grand Commander in recognition of his outstanding public service to the country. Mr. Sobel studied at Harvard University where he earned his BA in economics with honors in 1981 and his MBA in 1987. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jaime Augusto Zobel de Ayala. Good morning to everyone, and uh, Phil, uh, thank you very much for, for the kind introduction, as always. Let me congratulate you, uh, Ramon Del Rosario, DJ De Jesus, the whole leadership team at AIM for uh, this continuing series of forums on CSR. Um, I know that uh, this forum has now been uh, going for uh, 10 years, and it has continued to grow in size and relevance in the region, and I think it's to a great credit to the organizers that they've given it this kind of life on a topic of great importance to all of us. Congratulations. Well, thank you again for this invitation. I, I have talked at this forum in the past when it was held in the Philippines, and it has been a topic uh, that has been of great interest to our group, so I have happily uh, accepted uh, this kind invitation. And what I offer today um, are our own experiences at the Ayala Group of Companies, at attempting to measure the strategic value of our business and corporate social actions. And I think that's the theme that uh, Phil uh, was suggesting for the second part of your series today. This has not been an easy task uh, for many of us. Uh, CSR activities, as we all know, are not easily quantifiable. However, measuring impact, I think, is an important challenge to all of us if we're to make meaningful changes in the way we work as organizations. Let me start by saying that as a business group, we have always sought to align our business goals to the national development agenda of the country. That's been a prime value structure of the Ayala Group. This has and always will be part of the core objectives of our businesses. This has evolved out of our realization that we're all part of a larger integrated economic system, and we have to be part of the solutions needed to address the social and economic challenges of our communities and indeed the nation at large. However, beyond any moral obligation, there are strong business reasons for us to work hard at finding solutions to the developmental challenges of our country. In the end, I think we all have more to gain from a society that grows, distributes income fairly, and develops along progressive lines. Ultimately, 
businesses will not succeed in a society where the environment and social and physical infrastructure rem remain behind the curve or where poverty is so pervasive that it leaves the majority of its population alienated and disempowered. We all have a responsibility to close the gap on trust in our societies. If not, the riots we see against capitalism in the world today, I believe, will only intensify. We must all remain relevant to the communities that surround us and be part of solutions that uplift them. As each of our businesses across the Ayala Group acknowledges its more comprehensive role in social and economic development, we have, over time, moved towards aligning our business goals more closely with our corporate social responsibility objectives. In fact, we now integrate them as one strategic plan in a number of cases in our group. We now increasingly define our business models, actions, and investments in ways that create shared value among all our stakeholders and communities. As our thinking began to mature along these lines, we have seen each of our group companies continue to improve on their CSR practices. They have innovated on products and systems, strengthened policies, reached out to stakeholders, and opened up to new markets. This has led our group of companies in Ayala to engage with groups and communities that lie outside the sphere of their traditional service networks. These communities, which now are included but not in the past, now include our overseas Filipinos, groups at the base of the economic pyramid, and micro-entrepreneurs. We have also started to offer new products and services that meet the needs of underserved sectors that remain a significant part of our country's population. While these add value at a broader social development agenda, these initiatives have also proven to be sources of new growth and innovation for our businesses. They prove that we can, prof that we can improve profitability while simultaneously contributing effectively to the social and economic fabric of our country. As might be expected, each company in our group is at a different level of implementation. Manila Water, involved in water distribution and Ayala Land, involved in real estate development, for example, are shining examples to the rest of our group, and they have become benchmarks for our other companies in the practice of strategic CSR. In these companies, CSR has evolved beyond its traditional definition into a model of more strategic collaboration between public and private sectors, the academe, and industry. However, as we began to align our business objectives more formally with our social responsibility objectives, the challenge of finding the appropriate metrics for quantifying success became our new challenge. Traditional financial metrics were well established, but those for environmental or social goals were far more elusive. In addition, we had to redefine ways of measuring our contribution to society that move beyond the metrics required by our SEC and the stock market. Bottom line, I think and I believe that it is important to re-examine the way we each of us measure success in the corporate world. Traditional financial measures put an inordinate focus on end output. That is important, but these measures do not reflect the way that output is produced or generated, nor do they seem to take into account their impact on all the broader aspects of quality of life, the state of the environment, or the welfare of the many stakeholders we interact with. Given the challenges we face today, with issues like poverty, social inequality, and global warming, traditional financial measures may not be entirely sufficient in measuring the true impact of our actions as business entities. Performance